In this video, we will see three different approaches that will explain why a negative multiplied by a negative is equal to a positive. So, let's start with the first approach. First, let's say that we want to multiply negative 7 by positive 2. We can write this product as negative 7 plus another negative 7 because multiplying something by 2 means adding it twice. Then the result here will be negative 14. So we can say that a negative multiplied by a positive is a negative. But now what about multiplying negative 7 by negative 2? We know that a negative multiplied by a negative is a positive, so negative 7 times negative 2 will be positive 14. But then why a negative multiplied by a negative is a positive? While we don't have such a simple explanation as in the case of negative 7 times positive 2, let's look at the following example. In this example, we will multiply negative 7 by the sum of 2 and negative 2. To simplify this expression, we can use the order of operations and add the numbers inside the parentheses. Here 2 plus negative 2 equals 0, then negative 7 times 0 equals 0. Now let's write this expression to the right one more time. So we have negative 7 times 2 plus negative 2. This time let's simplify this expression using the distributive property. First, we will multiply negative 7 by 2, and again negative 7 by negative 2. So we will write negative 7 times 2 plus negative 7 times negative 2. After performing these operations, we know from the previous method that the result has to be 0. So negative 7 times 2 is negative 14. So we will write negative 14 plus, and now we need to multiply negative 7 and negative 2. Then we need to ask negative 14 plus what number will give us the result 0? This number must be positive 14. Then negative 14 plus 14 will give us 0. So then, from this example, we can say that negative 7 times negative 2 is positive 14. Now, let's see the second approach. With this approach, we will use the number line to define opposite numbers. If two numbers are located on opposite sides of 0 and have the same distance from 0, then these numbers are opposites of each other. For example, negative 7 and positive 7 are opposites of each other, and we can say that the opposite of 7 is negative 7, and the opposite of negative 7 is positive 7. Now, let's see how we can write these statements. The symbol we use for negatives is the same symbol we use for opposite numbers. So, this is how we write negative 7, and this is how we write the opposite of 7. As you see, when we write the opposite of a number, we write this number in parentheses. So then, we can write that the opposite of 7 is negative 7, and the opposite of negative 7 is positive 7. And now, let's talk about the product of negative 7 and negative 2. So again, in this product, we are multiplying two negative numbers. If negative 7 is the same as the opposite of 7, let's replace this negative 7 with the opposite of 7. Then we can write the opposite of 7 multiplied by negative 2. And now take a look at the product of 7 and negative 2. This product is negative 14. So then we will bring down the opposite sign and 7 times negative 2 is negative 14. But then the opposite of negative 14 is positive 14. So we will write positive 14. So then negative 7 times negative 2 is positive 14. 
And now let's look at the approach number three. In everyday life, we use positive numbers to represent the cash or the assets we might have, and we use negative numbers to represent any debt we might have. So we could interpret the expression negative seven times two as accumulating a debt of seven dollars twice. So if we write this expression as negative seven plus another negative seven, then we will have a total debt of fourteen dollars. Now, if we could lose this debt of $14, this would be the same as gaining $14. And to remove this debt, we would need to multiply negative 7 by negative 2. Then this result will be positive 14, and this is a gain of $14. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe, leave a comment, and thank you for watching.